right, hello. Let's see how long I can sit here before my back starts to hurt. That is without anything to support my back. Anyway, uh, hi, welcome to a video. I can see myself in the TV reflection, which is really great. That's a good a reason to sit here on the couch because I can actually make sure that the stuff that I'm showing you is in frame perfectly and that it's not, hopefully, not too much glare and stuff. Um, so, this video is probably pretty long. So I'm, I'm gonna take my time, I'm not gonna stress, I'm not gonna uh, just, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna talk about whatever I feel like talking about, or, well, main, okay, this, this is a main, mainly a massive update, as you will probably um, have, know by now from the title. I have no idea what I'll title this, but I'm gonna talk about a few different things, but mainly I'll, I'll show you a bunch of movies. That's what I've planned, because I've bought so much stuff lately, and uh, the amount of stuff that I've uh, bought, um, it's a bit, a bit overwhelming. Um, I usually write down the stuff that I buy uh, on a document online to, to sort of make sure that I, I, I don't forget about things. Um, and when I've talked about them in an update, I sort, sort of take them off or I remove them. Right now, the stuff that I have not talked about yet is about four pages long, almost four pages of, t <coughs> of titles. Some of, some of those titles are uh, box sets and stuff, and I'll, I'll try to show you some box sets in this video, but I'm gonna be, do, be doing some other stuff first. Um, uh, yeah, let's see, I don't know what the best way is to sort of structure uh, structure this video. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm planning on, on doing a bunch of things, uh, well, sitting, sitting right here, but <laughs> talking about a bunch of things. But what I will do um, to make it a bit less overwhelming, <laughs> I'm gonna put the times in the description when I talk about whatever I end up, I end up talking about. Uh, no spoilers in terms of titles or anything, but if you want some kind of, um, uh, well, just a brief descrip description of what's going on or what's going to happen in the video, what, what, I'll, what I'll talk about, just uh, you can check the description. If you don't want to watch all of it, that's completely fine, because I'm not going to get into the movies until a little while. I'm going to talk about some games first. And maybe maybe comment on the Oscars a little bit. Just share a few brief thoughts, and um, maybe something else. We'll see. Uh, but then I'll get to the movies, and uh, it, it will all be in the description. So you can just skip around if you want to, or if you kind of want to know what's gonna happen or what's gonna, what's coming up, you can check it. Or if you don't really feel like knowing, if you're gonna watch it all anyway, then you don't have to check it. But it's right there in case you do. <clears throat> So I'm a little bit uh, un unused to making videos like this because it's been a while, I don't know. Let's check my YouTube here. My last video was three weeks ago almost and it's a bit too long. I just haven't been in the mood to make videos for a while. Um, I mean, I have made videos, just not as regularly as I used to, I guess. And then the Christmas video was a month ago. Uh, and then I made three unboxing videos in mid-December. Uh, and a uh, movie haul video a, a month and a half ago. I haven't been sitting like this in, in a month and a half talking about movies, so... I, I did film uh, an update video actually about a month and a half ago as well. Over there. But I was not happy with it, so I never uploaded it. Um, it's sitting on my computer, but I'm, I'm not gonna upload it. Because, I, I don't know, I'm just too, I'm too self-critical, I, I think. Uh, but I'm, 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 I'm not gonna upload it. Uh, I spent like three hours on the video So that's great. That's some time wasted, but I'm gonna have to <laughs> I'm gonna have to go through the shelves and kind of pull out each one and uh, Talk about those later because that's even more titles on top of these four pages of stuff <laughs> I recall saying not too long ago that I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna be buying too much stuff and that, that's something I've done many times uh, now I don't feel like I've um, fucked up or whatever by buying so much because I've kind of been enjoying it and I, I, I've sold stuff when necessary to, to be able to afford to buy all the, all the stuff that I have been buying. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think I need that escapism right now. I need to just kind of buy, go crazy and buy stuff because I, I just need to, I, I need to do that to be able to cope, I think. Maybe, that's just something I made up right now. <laughs> But let, let's go with that. Um, but yeah, okay. So, um, like I said, uh, maybe I missed something, I, I don't know. Well, if I did, then maybe I'll come back to it. I'm sorry if this is a bit unstru unstru unstructured, like I said. 
Uh, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, about midnight right now on on this Saturday and it's Sunday tomorrow, and uh, I think I need to get my mind off things, so I'm, I'm gonna do do a video because uh, I'll be I've been putting this off for a while. Um, so yeah, okay. Um, so I have some PS4 games that I've been playing that I want to talk about. Uh, I'm gonna try not to be too long-winded. Um, but before that, I I, am, I have a few. Uh, second-hand store PS2 game purchases because as you know uh, I bought a PS4 I don't know maybe six months ago now maybe a bit less than that um, I, I got back into gaming after years of not having played games at all and I've been enjoying playing PS4 but there's a lot of games that I can't play because they're not on PS4 and the PS4 is not backwards compatible so I've been looking into getting a PS3 that can play I think there's there I mean I think I have I, I have, um, I think I know what models or whatever are um, backwards compatible both for PS1 and PS2. I, I don't think it's the slim one, but I think it's the, the earlier ones. So I'm gonna get one of those eventually. Um, well, actually, maybe, maybe, well, you know, never mind. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, be, <laughs> I'm gonna get a PS3 that can play PS3 games and some other ones. Uh, and I just happened to come across a bunch of uh, PS2 games in a secondhand store a few months ago. I just haven't really had any good place to show them. Uh, well, actually, this one I did order. I don't know if I talked about this. This is Evil Dead. Uh, and by the way, a lot of good stuff is coming up, so stick around. <laughs> a lot of good releases in terms of movies and stuff. Um, Evil Dead, a uh, fistful of broom, boom, boomstick. This one I just bought to sort of test out my PS2 if it worked, and it didn't. So uh, I now I know that it doesn't for a fact. Uh, because, uh, yeah, the one that I had from before. And then just, you know, um, Crash Tag Team Racing. I, I did mention a while back that I wanted to p play some Crash Bandicoot games, and I did find a couple here. Uh, Nitro Kart, I, I really don't know which ones these are, but it's the ones that they had. I think they had two of this one, and one of them I sold and made a profit. I think they had three of them, two, two sealed ones and one unsealed, but I bought the sealed ones. This one, I'm pretty sure this is one that I had and you, I think I bought this at Lanzarote, if the, I don't know how you say that in English, but Lanzarote in the... Is that in the Canary Islands? I don't even know. I don't, it's been so long, I haven't thought about it in a while. But it's down there in the um, Mediterranean. Uh, and I bought this game down there, and then I got rid of it, and then now I found it again. <laughs> and it's uh, Crash. I mean, yeah, Crash. It's Twin Sandy. Uh, so kind of fun uh, to get this one back, I guess. I don't know if I'll enjoy playing this again, but um, eventually, whenever I'm able to, I'll check it out, I, gu I guess. Um, and then we have GTA 3, which I don't know if I'll enjoy very much, having played GTA 5 now. This one is quite old, but we'll see. Um, this one I played a lot. This was the first one that I played, uh, Vice City. This is sealed. Uh, these were about $2 each, by the way, so it's a pretty, pretty good deal. Um, this one I played with a friend way, way, way back when I was like 10 years old, and I remember you could shoot people, people's heads off and blood, it was like a fountain of blood, at least that's how I remember it, and uh, that's what, what we did at the age of 10. Meanwhile, my dad, like three years before, wouldn't let me have this really stupid wooden gun, which was not even a gun, it, was, it had no details on it. Little did he know that I played games like that. He was pretty restricted. I mean, he was pretty strict with uh, stuff like that. But yeah, so I've been a fan of the G GTA games for a long time, and uh, I haven't played the fourth one really, but uh, eventually. <laughs> okay, uh, Rayman th 3 Hoodlum Havoc. Okay, Hoodlum Havoc. I haven't played these games, so I don't know if this is any good. But I think it's pretty. Um, beloved series or semi beloved, I think. I don't. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I think so. Uh, this one now, or, or, you know, onto the PS4 games. Uh, Lumo. I really didn't care for this too much. It's. Um, I'm not really gonna, gonna go in depth, but if you can see on the back here, it's pretty dark. But there are three images of small rooms, and basically that's what you go between. You you go with, between doors. It's, it looks like floating rooms in space. There's like blackness, darkness surrounding it. Well, it's some sort of... Uh, I don't know where it is. Uh, and uh, it's a puzzle game, an old-school kind of throwback game, I think. And um, I, 
it looked fun, but I, I, I don't know, I couldn't really get into it. And after a while, I got lost and it was it, it became very labyrinthine and and it, it just um, it, it kept I kept falling down somewhere and then I wasn't sure where I ended up and I really couldn't figure out what the, where the hell I was going. It was a bit confusing and I just didn't really care too much because so I just I just left it. Okay, now to the three main ones here. Um, well, the two main ones uh, right here, but also this one I suppose, uh, Mad Max. This one, this one I'm selling because <laughs> maybe I'm impressionable with games. Um, I think I, I've always been. I think it's um, the fact that it's um, it's it's a fake world and everything feels uh, well. This one in particular is very feels just complete. It, it, everything is just hopeless. You know, <laughs> there's not no, no no hope anywhere in sight in this game. It's a grim, brutal game, and maybe maybe it's just maybe people aren't usually as impressionable or whatever. Maybe people who play games nowadays don't let let this stuff get to them the way it gets to me. But I don't know if that's because I'm not used to playing games or, it, or if it's because... I don't know. But this game in particular, I think, um, got to me a little bit too much after a while. I just started to... I had, I had a dream about it. Not, not a nightmare, but I had a, a dream about it. And at that point, when I woke up, I was like, okay, I need to stop playing Mad Max because it's um, getting to me, I think in a bad way. Um, so there. I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, I played for a long time actually, but then after a while, I think it was the, the repetitive repetitive nature of the game. Uh, I think it sort of picks up after Fury Road, and obviously it, it borrows a lot from that movie. Um, and it's just a grim kind of... Yeah, I can't find the right words. But it's uh, it just it just didn't make me feel great. Uh, two games that I really enjoyed, however, were The Last Guardian, which I got for Christmas, and I played this in like two days, and I loved it. It's, yeah, I mean, I haven't really played something like this before, because back in the day when I played games, I, I, didn't, I didn't really play a lot. I played like Tekken 3 or Tekken 4, and I played Tony Hawk's American Wasteland a lot, uh, and I played GTA San Andreas, and... Um, that was it. <laughs> I played a few other games. What the hell did I play? Well, I, play, I played online games, but you know. Um, in terms of video games, I didn't really play a whole lot of mature stuff. Um, this one is, is different from from the stuff that I used to play, and so it was something new for me. It's a new experience. And I loved it. Um, there are a few problems with this. Um, the controls are a bit slow sometimes. Um, it's about, you, you're this little boy, and he kind of has this big rat, eagle, dog-like creature, I guess, that follows him around. And uh, after a while you get to sort of interact with him, or you get to jump on his back and you make him, him jump. If, you don't, if, if you're not able to make the jump as the boy, then you can jump on Tr Trico's back and then he will jump. Sometimes when you want him to jump, he, he won't jump. Uh, it takes him a long time to do what you tell him to do, because you, you give him commands. And he just keeps looking around, and sometimes he goes to the wrong places. And you know that that's where I'm going. There's no no place else to go. I mean, I, I have to go there. I mean, where else can I go? And eventually, sure enough, he, that's where he jumps, and that's obviously where you're supposed to go. But sometimes it takes minutes, literally a couple minutes sometimes, for him to do what you tell him to do. And some people have, you know, suggested that that's, well, I mean, he's like a real animal, you know. He's not robotic. And that's 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 a good point, but at a certain point it feels very um, irritating to have having to wait that long every time. Well, not every every time, but quite a lot. I mean, there's probably a good hour of the game just kind of okay. Come on, Trico, do the fucking thing, you know. So it's it's a I don't know. I think they could have probably improved that part. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional or if it was a, a sh I don't know a shortcoming or whatever of the game. But for me that was a bit. Mm, you know, could have been better, but aside from that, it was a, a, an absolutely wonderful game. The way, the way you moved around these different uh, mountains, whatever we, wherever, the, whatever you want to call it, with this big, this big, um, yeah, I can't really find the right word, but uh, just this massive place that you don't really know 
very much about until the very end. Yeah, the way they work that out, it's like it's it's just beautiful. It, it, and sometimes you come back to p previous places, and the way they've figured that all out, it's like the m biggest puzzle ever. But they've made it work, and it, it's just it's just incredible. Uh, I haven't really heard uh, a lot of praise for that game, to be honest. It's not on the list of the best games, or or uh, it has. I I, do, I, do, I feel like I mean I don't hang around on gaming websites or IGN or whatever. I, I don't know. I, do, I don't watch a lot of that stuff uh, to, to be fair but I haven't heard a lot of people talking about the game I guess but for me it was absolutely great and I don't know if that's partly because I'm unused to the um, gaming world maybe if I had been playing for years if I never stopped playing in the first place maybe I wouldn't be as blown away by the game I, I really don't know I, I just know that I, I really loved it so um, okay I just I just want to add something uh, it's a few days later I'm sitting here editing um, I, I, I just thought of the um, I forgot to say something, or I just I, I didn't think about it. But I did read some I did read some reviews concerning what I just said in the video. Uh, I um, did read some reviews of people who were 40, 50 year old. Uh, they they said that you know I'm a 40, 50 year old whatever jaded gamer, and it's been a long time since something moved me the way this game did. So um, there's that. So so there are people who've been playing for a whole whole lot longer than I have. You know. Uh, to say the least, who uh, been been kind of maybe a bit seem to have been become a bit jaded and bored with the gaming world, if you will. But then this game came around and they kind of uh, made for an experience that they hadn't had in a while, and that they were very thankful for. So uh, I, f I feel like I should add, add that. <laughs> so I think that's it. But okay, so back to the video. And I'm gonna keep on editing now. It was uh, it was quite an, quite an experience for me to play it and. Um... I, I had a blast, and it was only a few times where I got a bit annoyed. Uh, a couple things were a bit difficult. I had to look up on YouTube what you were supposed to do, but for the most part, it was it was just pure enjoyment. Uh, anyway, this game is <laughs> it's a certain game that I when when I mentioned uh, that I was going to get a PS4, this is the one that pe people kept uh, repeating to me that they thought that I should play, and I I spoke to a friend recently. Um, about games and I mentioned this and he was like well that's the one that I told you to play and I was like oh you told me to play that too well okay I guess that makes sense because everybody talks about this game and uh, it's a little game called <laughs> The Last of Us after having played this game I just pre-ordered pre -ordered, I just ordered the um, Nathan Drake collection on PS4 and I'm looking forward to playing um, the Unshort Uncharted games uh, 1, 2 and 3 then eventually the fourth one if I like them, but I'm sure I will. This one was, I mean, I don't know, I mean, obviously I can't do it justice here, uh, but um, yeah, everything uh, I've heard is, is true, I guess. I mean, it, it's just, it's phenomenal. It, it's um, a really uh, great experience. It's, um, uh, it's it, it, I mean, I don't know how long this has been going on, but to me it proves that video games can be a lot, a whole lot more than what they were to me back then when I played. I mean, such a fantastic story. Obviously the gameplay is great, the graphics are fantastic, and the puzzles, well, I don't know, I guess the puzzles to a certain extent, but um, the navigation through the uh, the landscapes and the ruined buildings and all of that stuff is just uh, incredible uh, to discover. Uh, but not just that, the story is really good and you really care what's happening. And you're sitting there listening to the very good, by the way, um, voice actors, and you really want to know what they're saying. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to skip ahead to a to a place pretty far away, pretty far into the game. Excuse my English, by the way. This happened. I haven't. I don't speak a lot of English <laughs> compared to what I used to. Not even a tenth. Uh, I'm sure. So bear with me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, quite a few hours into the game, um, you get to this place. Obviously, it's a. I mean, if you haven't played the game, I guess you're not into gaming. <laughs> But it's just to set it up briefly, if I need to. It's a post-apocalyptic game where 20 years ago, I think it's 20 years, yeah. Um, there was some kind of outbreak, you know, zombie outbreak, I, I guess. And now we're, uh, it's um, obviously, uh, yeah, ruined landscape. I mean, it's a post-apocalyptic landscape uh, society. And uh, you're navigating through this. Uh, at one point of the game, you, are, you, you get to a part of some... Uh, maybe much needed tranquility. I mean, there there are slower parts in the game too, with dialogue and, and discovering 
uh, places. But at, at, at one point, uh, you're getting to a game. Uh, to, if, I don't know how I should how, how I should explain it, uh, but you you you've just uh, met two black brothers. I think just by saying that, I think you know uh, where I am because you get to a place where um, you're just kind of. Well, it's sort of the calm before the storm, in a way, because it's right before the sniper thing. And you're just kind of walking around through houses. I don't I don't think you need to do that, but you have the option to go into these abandoned buildings, these abandoned abandoned houses. Uh, and there's an ice cream truck there, and uh, Ellie's commenting on the ice cream truck, like, you know, well, you, you gotta be, I mean, she, basically she finds it absurd that somebody drove around in, in, an, in an ice cream truck selling ice cream from a truck like or a van we're like what are you talking about That's, you're kidding me you know um and then at one point in one of the houses she and the youngest kid of the brothers they're playing darts and i saw them picking up the darts and i was like i just went there with joel which which is my name <laughs> so i was playing myself not really but 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 joel walks over there uh well i walks <laughs> i walks over i walked over with joel uh, feels weird to say that, but um, and I just stood there and, and watched them play darts. And after all this mayhem, I, I guess, or after all these uh, exciting, um, sometimes difficult um, sequences, hours into the game, I, I, I found it somehow exciting and endearing just to stand there and watch two characters play dart for a while. And that just proved to me that wow, these characters are really well. Um, developed and really well, um, well voice, <laughs> really well acted, I guess, by you know by the actors, and it was just one of my favorite parts in the game, actually, that calm before the storm, um, because it just uh, it was just it was just beautiful. It was just, um, and I, I really took my time too. I, I walked into every house and I went into every place, <laughs> you know, almost felt a bit a bit voyeuristic, kind of. Uh, sneaking into people's houses and something that yeah, I kind of always, well, not always, but if it's something I kind of sometimes feel like I would do if I could, like if I was the only one left on earth, I would go into <laughs> hundreds of people, is this creepy? I don't know, but I, I would go into hundreds of people's houses and apartments and see how they lived. Uh, and now this is a game and everything's ruined since years ago and it's, it's not, I mean, anyway, but, but, but it still felt a little bit like that and just the fact that I don't know, I don't know, it, it was just a great part of the game, and I don't know, it might be odd to some people that I decide to talk for minutes about that, <laughs> I, I don't know, but to me, it was just impressive that after all that stuff that had happened before, something, something like that, something simple like that, could make me really, yeah, that, that I could care about that so much, and I think I was there for a good half hour, it's only one little lane, and uh, maybe f three houses, maybe, maybe four, I think three, maybe. But I took my time. Anyway, uh, yeah, it took me maybe three days to play the game. Uh, <laughs> at several points I thought that, that the game was going to end and then it just kept going. And I was like, well, this is... Imp I don't know how long games usually go la last for, but it just seemed to go on forever to me. And I, I didn't mind. But uh, it was just really impressive, the, the amount of stuff that they put in there. And uh, holy shit, the, the game in the, the snow towards the end were... Joel has to rescue Ellie. That whole thing. I'm not gonna spoil too much. That was that was incredible. I mean, that was that was scary. That was the one of the that was one of the scariest parts in, in the game. Having to, um, I, I yeah, I'm guess I'm gonna have to put some kind of spoiler warning before this. But uh, when you're trying to, when you when you're trying to kill David in that sort of diner, and he's sneaking around behind the tables and stuff. That was probably the scariest part to me. I mean, not the, the the hotel basement when you fall down from the elevator. That was scary, but the part where you have to, have to kill David, that was terrifying. <laughs> I, I, I was really happy when that was over, because I was not really enjoying that. I was a bit freaked out. Uh, well, maybe not, but I, I was uh, looking back at it. I was like, well, I kind of feel like, um, I don't know how I kept my cool, because it's scary stuff. Anyway, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but that was... Anyway, needless to say, it, uh, I'm, I'm completely on board with uh, the hype, whatever, and I'm looking forward to the second one. Oh, <laughs> that's the games. Um, 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 yeah, yeah.
I said that this was going to be a long video. Um, you know what, I'm, I might talk about the Oscars, but I think I'm going to talk about some movies first. Um, I have movies from a bunch of different places, I've ordered a bunch of stuff. I've been to second-hand stores many, 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 many times uh, since I last talked to you like this. And I never go to second-hand stores without... Um, I mean, I never go there to look for stuff for myself. Uh, but as some of you might know, probably do know, I buy. St I go to second-hand stores because I, I have a pretty good knowledge of what stuff sells for more money in Sweden, what titles you want to pick up and how much you can get for them and stuff. Uh, so usually that's how I make my money. I mean, that's how I how I'm able to buy. I mean, sure, I needed to sell some stuff for my own collection, a few things, but ma the, mainly the stuff that I uh, the stuff that I spend on movie, I mean the money that I spend on movies, that's money that I've m made from selling stuff that I find in second-hand stores. So obviously I, I have to keep going to second-hand stores to, to, to be able to keep buying movies from online and stuff. But when I am at second-hand stores, I, uh, mostly every time I find stuff for myself too. Because some stuff are really hard to pass up. And so I have a bunch of that, that stuff. Um, and I, I have two huge piles over there. But I'm gonna save that for later, mostly DVDs, uh, a couple of Blu-rays, but mostly DVDs. Uh, but I'm gonna show you one haul that I was pretty amazed to come across. A uh, bunch of Blu-rays, somebody must have donated them uh, from his or her collection. His probably, it's a pretty masculine. <laughs> a bunch of movies, I guess. Um, and I don't know really why anybody would want to get rid of all of that stuff. I mean, somebody who, who would collected stuff why would it, why would somebody give all this stuff to to a second hand store for free i mean when somebody when that person could have gotten money for it um i mean i don't know people are different but i would not have given that stuff up for free and i made a pretty uh, fantastic deal i i think i paid about 30 35 us dollars for all of the stuff that i'm that i'm about to show you so let's bring the stuff up here and uh let's see what we have um, I don't think I'm missing anything, <clears throat> um, possibly one or two titles, but I don't think so, I think this is everything. So I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, first I'm collecting, a bunch, you know, I'm an alien fan uh, and I'm collecting alien stuff and this one I did not have, but I knew, I knew about this edition. This is the uh, kind of face hugger edition, the super embossed edition, I'm not sure if you can tell that, that it's embossed, you probably can. But this face hug around the front is the most embossed thing on a Blu-ray cover that I've ever seen. <laughs> it looks pretty cool. And it kind of hugs the whole case and, you know, there's the tail on the back. That's not embossed, but uh, yeah, I found this. I mean, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. Um, Man on Fire. These regular Blu-rays, they were like $1.50. Uh, this one was, uh, speaking of my friend, uh, before th we watched this movie together, uh, City of the Living Dead, which I have this one, I, I, I have this very edition over there, I can see it from where I'm sitting. This one is out of print, I think, and goes for a little bit of money, so I think I can make some money back by selling this, which, uh, is, uh, I, I didn't really know that it was that, that rare, I guess, when I bought this, I just figured, well, <laughs> an hour release for $1.50, I'm gonna get that and sell it. Uh, so that's not for me, but we did watch it again. Just We just happened to come across it in the pile and we just, ah, let's watch it, okay. Um, Highlander, this is, uh, looks like a Dutch release to me. Maybe somebody from, I can't tell if that's in focus from here, but uh, it doesn't matter too much. But it's not a Swedish release, which I noticed when I got home, but it's it's it doesn't matter too much. Um, this was, <laughs> I, I did watch this, this was quite fun. Um, it's it's a bizarre, well maybe not bizarre, but it's very cheesy. Uh, it's got some good music, it's got some good things going for it. The um, the scenes back in Scotland, they're very good. I mean the production design, the, the, the scenery is very very nice to look at. But then there's some really bad acting. This guy, Christopher Lambert, I don't know who he is really, but he can't act. <laughs> um, I don't know if he just happened to be bad in this, and maybe he's he's better in other stuff, but he was not very good in this, and not very convincing. And some stuff are really cheesy. There's some some sword fighting sequences when they're standing on a big rock, and first of all, 
how did they get up to that rock? <laughs> I would I would love to see the scene where they climb up to the rock just to be able to fight on the rock. <laughs> but not, but that's not that's not really what I was gonna say. They're fighting because there's a helicopter circling them, and they're fighting. I mean, <laughs> they're doing this with the swords. I mean, they're not terrible choreography. So there's some stuff that's not really very good about the movie, but the good and the bad, and then the, the product with the two together is very odd. It's somehow very entertaining, and so I did I did enjoy that. Okay, um, Bullet with Steve McQueen. This is one of those movies that I had heard about um, as being one of those great car chase movies, but the car chase is a couple minutes long, like, th what, three minutes long? And it's a good car chase, it's a really good car chase, but I I think there's better. Um, maybe I'm just not a connoisseur of car chases, but I mean it's certainly well filmed, but I just didn't, I, I wasn't really blown away by it, I don't know. And the movie as a whole, I wasn't really in that into it, to be honest. To be honest, it's pretty good, but, <laughs> but um, I, I don't know, I didn't really love it. Uh, but it, it was a good movie. I'll probably watch it again sometime. I think actually I wasn't feeling very good when I bought it. I think I, I had some anxiety when I watched it. So that's never a good thing when you watch movies, but you know, that's how it is. But anyway, um, Natural Born Killers. I have this on DVD, but I'm very happy to upgrade that. Uh, actually, I have Man on Fire on DVD too. I forgot to mention that. And I did watch that. Um, I, well, I tried to watch it like a couple of years ago. But it was it was like full screen and it was it, the aspect ratio did not go go along well with my TV and it just the picture quality was horrible and I, I couldn't watch it uh, so I turned it off but now I'm, I'm happy to have the Blu-ray so that I can watch it if I want to uh, okay um, another upgrade here American Psycho very happy to find this um, uncut version uh, I have this on DVD uh, and I saw it with my two two of my cousins like. Um, seven eight years ago and we enjoyed it i think but i think i'll enjoy it more now uh this one um where eagles dare very cool some of these are out of print by the way uh so i haven't seen this yet but uh, i'm sure that's gonna be good this one i have i do not own but i have seen this i saw this when this came out in um 2010 i think not no nine maybe the road with uh, Viggo Mortensen by the way, speaking of Viggo Mortensen, um, he is obviously nominated for an Oscar, which is very nice. Uh, <laughs> we're very, um, yeah, that, 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 I, I, that was some uh, some good news to me when I watched the uh, the live uh, feed or whatever of the uh, the announcements. I was very happy to to find out that he was nominated for Captain Fantastic, uh, and I don't know if this was his last sort of. Um, uh, acclaimed work or acclaimed movie. I don't know. He's done a few kind of uh, well, <laughs> a few movies that have hasn't haven't maybe done that well. I think. Uh, but yeah. But he's he's back now. <laughs> uh, he was never gone. But you know, he's back in the limelight, and I'm happy for him. But the road, I, I remember liking a lot, and uh, <clears throat> I'll check it out eventually. And then uh, the last two Tarantino films, except for one that I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, that I needed on um, Blu-ray. Um, did I have these on DVD before? I must. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, I must have. <laughs> uh, Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction did not have this on Blu-ray. This I've seen a f maybe two, three times. But it's been a long time. Same goes for this, but I've only seen it once. So really happy to find those on Blu-ray. Uh, almost bought those for um, more. Uh, recently, but I'm glad I waited because a dollar fifty for those each, pretty good. Uh, okay, then two DVD sets. Um, uh, no, actually, I, I put one Blu-ray aside here. Uh, a Blu-ray set <laughs> first, and then two DVD sets. All of this for, like I said, thirty, thirty, thirty-five dollars. Incredible deal. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, one, two, and three. And not the fourth one, but I, I did order that later on, so I'll be. I'll, I'll, yeah, anyway, anyway, I'll get to that. Uh, but yeah. Pirates 1, 2, and 3. Uh, I think, yes, yeah, so I saw the first one in the movie theater with my mom in 2003. So I've been um, enjoying them ever since they came out. And especially one of my friends in my class in like 2005, 2006, maybe. Uh, the first one was his favorite movie. So we talked about that a lot in school. And 
I've seen it with family and stuff and with friends and I saw the second one. No, I saw the third one in the movie theater with a friend of mine in, at the midnight showing and that was really cool. That, that was a good experience. Um, I was, his, his mom was... Uh, I was very surprised to fi find out that his mom, I remember that, that, that she let him go to a midnight screening on a school, school day. Uh, but she did and we went there to see it and then a bunch of other people uh, this this friend of mine was did not go to my class, but a bunch of other people from my class were, were also there and, and it, was, it was a fun fun time uh, <laughs> I remember being being really tired when I watched it uh, But that was cool and, and the, the second one I saw in Stockholm with my cousins and my uncle and We loved it so much and we couldn't stop talking about it after so the stuff in this box that I have fantastic memories from all of that, so it's hard not to be excited for the fifth one. Uh, the fourth one, um, I'll get to that, but I well I can just talk about it now I guess. But the fourth one I didn't like as much, um, and I don't even remember. Well, to be honest, I didn't really like the third one, the third one as much either. I thought it was a bit confusing, but I'll, I'll give it an, another go. I'm gonna, gonna try to watch them at least before the fifth one comes out. But there's a lot of stuff that I have to watch again. I mean, the Game of Thrones seasons before season seven and Twin Peaks before the, the third season, Prison Break season 4 before that comes out, and, and I have to catch up on some Marvel movies, and yeah, anyway. So we'll, we'll see if I get to those, but I'm, I'm gonna try to. But at least back then I didn't really like the third one too much. Uh, and the fourth one I watched when it came out in 2011, I guess, downloaded it, and I didn't like it too much. So uh, I'll try to watch them again. Okay, now to the two DVD sets. Uh, American Ninja, I will probably sell this because well this is out of print and you can get some money for this so I'll make some more money back <laughs> um, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna sell it when I bought it I just picked it up because it's expensive and I decided to well I'll decide later but, but I looked up the movies and I've sort of I heard about them before I guess but I have, didn't really know much about them um, but I looked them up briefly and it just doesn't, doesn't seem like movies I'd enjoy very much so I'm gonna sell them I think this one though I'm very happy to have, this is quite pricey too, uh, but I'm not going to sell this. This is, I'm really happy to find this because this has been um, on my wish list for a few years now. It went out of print a while ago and since then it's just been impossible to find for a good deal. So anyway, um, it's the Pusher, Pusher Trilogy, Pusher Trilogy, I can't pronounce that, the Pusher Trilogy by Nicholas Winding Refn. <laughs> I'm not going to try to pronounce that in Danish. I was gonna, but then I was like, no, let's not do that. <laughs> uh, I've seen the first one, and I liked it, but I've not seen the second and the third. But I, as far as I've understood it, uh, those sequels are very much appreciated. I mean, they're, they're, I mean, I think they have ratings um, that equals the first one on movie pages, I mean, on movie rating pages, whatever. <laughs> And uh, that's a bit surprising, both of the sequels, they're supposed to be really, really good too. Uh, so I'm looking forward to watching the first one again, and then the second and third. Uh, and if you, if you like those, by the way, and you haven't seen the movie Bleeder, I recommend that. Especially as a movie fan, you might enjoy some of those scenes, because it takes place in a movie store in the beginning, and there's like this guy who's... Anyway, now I'm going completely off topic here, but uh, there's a guy who is... Um, rambling i mean there's uh, he works at the video store i think it might be mads mickelson's character in bleeder and then somebody walks up to him as a customer in the video store and asks for something whatever and he, mads mickelson if it's him can't remember can't be sure he he gives him like 50 examples of directors in one take maybe not 50 but at least 20 directors 30 maybe in one take it's a yeah <laughs> fun scene for a film lover but anyway, that movie Bleeder is also really good, but it's been a long time since I saw that. Uh, but I, I remember liking Bleeder more than Pusher, actually. Um, but yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I need to make sure that all my batteries are charged, because I'm going to be filming for a while, and they, and they have a tendency of not lasting very long. So I just need to make sure that I'm not going to be without battery time halfway through this. Let's continue. <laughs> um, okay, uh, let's talk about a bunch of stuff that I got from CD-ON. 
we'll save that pile, we'll, we'll start with these. These I got uh, from Sidion, um, three for 200, three very attractive titles for me personally. This one, I been, had been wanting to get this for a while, uh, but it had been out of print, uh, but now it was available and cheap for once. And it is a movie called Enough Said. Uh, with Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who apparently hadn't done a movie like this before, a serious part like this. I didn't know that, but apparently she hasn't. And she was very good. And uh, James Gandolfini, who is terrific. Uh, I think this might have been... I think The Drop was the last one that came out, but I think this might have been the second last he did before he died. Um, it's directed by uh, Nicole Holofsiner. Holof Holofsiner. Yeah. Uh, it also, st also stars uh, co-stars Catherine Keener, uh, Tony Collette and Ben Falcone, and uh, it's a romantic comedy about uh, yeah Gandolfini and or with um, Gandolfini and uh, you, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Yeah. And I thought it was really good. It was a bit different from most romantic comedies, and it was a bit ref it was refreshing. It was uh, really sweet actually, and honest, and, and just very enjoyable. And uh, I love both those actors. I mean, probably two of my favorites to be honest. I mean, I have a lot of favorites. Yes. But they are two of them, for sure. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy that. Um, you know what? Before I, I continue with the CD on stuff, I'm just gonna grab a, a couple other ones. Let's see where I have them. Oh. Hi. Okay. Um, because I enjoyed it so much. So typically, when I watch something that I I've enjoyed. If it's, by, if it's a director, director that I like or that I don't know much about, but that maybe I like the movie, I tend to look up the director, maybe it's an actor that I enjoyed, and then I tend to look up that actor. Um, with this uh, f uh, movie, I decided to look up the director and see what movies he had made before, and so I bought a couple of them. Uh, although this one I just bought because <laughs> I like this movie, but I have this in a two-pack with a terrible movie called Because I Said So and I wanted a stand a standalone release of this because I want, I want to have all of her movies in the same section and I don't want to have that fucking movie with Diane Keaton and um, Mandy Moore, is it? Uh, in the same pack as this. Uh, not, not, that this is a not that this is a masterpiece but this is one that I really enjoyed a few years ago, several, several years ago I guess. Uh, Friends with Money, so I just I just ordered a cheap copy of that so that I can have all of them next to each other. Um, the other one that I ordered, which I have not, which I had not seen before, but I did now, is called Lovely and Amazing, which um, also with Catherine Keener. Uh, she's in all of her movies. Nicole Holofcener. I don't know how you pronounce her name. Um, and Catherine Keener is actually one of my favorite actor actresses. She has been in. Um, well, she, she has been for a long time. Uh, she was in one movie. One movie that I think of when I think about her is a movie called Please Give with Oliver Platt, one of my favorite actors. <laughs> um, and apparently that movie is by the same director, which I did not know. Uh, so I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to get that eventually too, so that I can add it to the collection. And then there's a couple more that I, I don't have, but that I'm gonna get eventually. Yeah, this one was, was good, for sure. Uh, it was... Um, I didn't really get into it as much as enough enough said. Uh, it was it felt more loose, uh, whereas enough said was a bit more coherent, maybe more professional. But that makes sense because that's later in her career. This one was still a good indie flick uh, with some good scenes, some good actors, uh, and um, nothing amazing. Nothing I will remember very well in a few years, <laughs> but one that I definitely enjoyed uh, the company of. Okay, now let's get back to um, the cd on stuff. So, Enough Said and these two following movies uh, were part of a, a deal for um, yeah three movies for 200 crowns. And all these three were fantastic finds for me. This one, Fargo. A little movie called Fargo. Holy shit, this is a great movie. <laughs> um, obviously the Co Coen brothers uh, they are some of the best, two of the best modern directors, you know, uh, working today. Uh, it's like, yeah, um, the Coen brothers, uh, Tarantino and Scorsese, are some of those directors that they are working today. Well, Scorsese is on a slightly older generation, I guess. But um, 
still uh, there are modern directors who are they're still very kind of prophetic and very um, um, in demand or <laughs> very very um, yeah very popular today that I tend to go back to and check and look back on um, in terms of just uh, reminding myself of what movies they've made stuff like that um, and anyway so I've tried to get a bunch of their movies lately I uh, haven't gotten too many of Scorsese's but um, Coen Brothers and Tarantino movies I've gotten quite a few recently um, and I rewatched uh, No Country for Old Men uh, a few months ago and I, uh, well couple, yeah anyway and I loved it I mean it yeah <laughs> and that made me, made me want to watch Fargo again so I was happy to find this in the um, the offer uh, I've seen that I had I had seen this before I don't know why I put that over there <laughs> Um, and I liked it, but I didn't really get it. Now I watched it, and I think I got something else out of it. And it's uh, it's very pessimistic, <laughs> um, and very nihilistic. But I'm also a bit like that, so that completely fine. Um, yeah, um, yeah, Fargo, really good. I, I don't think I enjoyed it as much as No Country for Old Men or Big Lebowski, but it's. Um, it's obviously a fantastic film. Okay, um, and then the third one is uh, A Christmas Carol. This adaptation is uh, the one with George C. Scott from 1984, I think. <laughs> yes. Um, so this one I'll watch, uh, you know, before Christmas this year, I guess. So I'll wait about ten and a half months, maybe, <laughs> and then I'll watch that. It's supposed to be one of the best. Um, adaptations, film adaptations of the uh, classic. And there goes the first... Is it? I don't know what angle I had. Uh, anyway, there goes the first battery. And I'm getting a bit worried because this is not going to last much longer now. Because <laughs> this battery sucks that I'm using now. Uh, I need a better camera. I can film for maybe half an hour and then I have to change batteries. Oh well. Uh, I'll keep going for as long as I can. Um, okay. Or worst case scenario, I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to come back later when they're charged. Uh, okay, and then the last one is... Um, speaking of Game of Thrones, I talked about that earlier. Wanting to rewatch it, or I mentioned it. Uh, so, season 6. Um, the Game of Thrones seasons, I've always, um, I've always gotten those a year later when they're released on Blu-ray. So I've always been a year behind. So, for seasons 1 to 5, I did that, but then after season 5, um, in April, May, maybe, April, something like that, uh, of last year, I uh, couldn't really wait <laughs> to see the next one, because I just had to know what happened, I guess, and I, I really didn't feel like waiting. I, I, I wanted to watch them as they aired, because it's much more exciting. Um, so I watched season 6. Uh, but there is a lot of, I mean, on, on HBO. Uh, but there is a lot of stuff that I have forgotten, so before season 7, because shit is definitely gonna keep going down, <laughs> uh, I feel like I need to reacquaint myself with some past events of the show. What's going on with this slipcase? I have heard people complaining about the slipcase, but I'm not sure what's going on here exactly. I don't want to break anything. Um, well, um, I do feel like before season, se season 7 comes out, or when that comes out, when I'm gonna watch that, I don't really want to be in the dark when it comes to anything, so I'm gonna try to rewatch all of these six seasons. Maybe not necessarily the sixth one, but preferably, uh, but at least the first five uh, before, probably the sixth too. Anyway, <laughs> before season seven comes out, so that I, 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 um, I, I better, I know better what's going on, because um, you know when you wait a year uh, with a show. With a show like this, where so much stuff goes on, you really can't remember everything. At least I can't. So, uh, and I really don't want to. What the hell, man? What's? What, what is this? <laughs> I'm trying to pull it out, but it it's glued to the top. But when I try to remove the glue, it just feels too tight, and I'm, it feels like I'm gonna rip it. Well, I'm gonna risk it. For fuck's sakes. Oh, this is terrible. This hurts, hurts. 
this hurts hurts my soul. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this design is not great. Um, so that's the slip cover. Okay. Um, I think we still have some have some glue on the the harder slip cover. That's just the way I like it. So I got distracted by my um, this lenticular too. I, I don't like lenticular stuff. I gotta be honest. I don't care for it. I <laughs> just those Di new Disney Savvy Steelbooks. They look terrible with a stupid card on them. I, stop doing that. Stop releasing lenticular stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, and now when I remove the glue, that's happening. <laughs> I threw it away too. Ugh. This is a big mess. Why did they do this? Idiots. Um, so I completely lost track of what I was talking about. Um, it was something about uh, <laughs> re-watching the show before the season 7 comes out. Uh, yeah, I'll do that because uh, with the show, with you know, it, it, there, there's just gonna be so much attention uh, towards Game of Thrones once again, and I just want—I don't want to miss out on, on anything. I don't want to miss out on anything, so I will do that. Okay, now let's be a bit quicker. Uh, if it wasn't for the battery, I, w I would not have to. But um, okay, so quickly um, on CDON, I am a plus, so-called plus member. And when you are, you get uh, sort of um, some kind of cash back um, when you buy stuff, and and that's usually collected for one whole. Well, that that's always. I don't know why I said usually. That is always collected for one whole year, and when that year is over, you get a check uh, with the money that you received during that year. I mean, you know, the more you buy, the more the the bigger a check you're gonna get, or whatever, or a gift card. Uh, and for that gift card uh, in January, I bought the following. So this was uh, for free. Well, this was because I'm a Plus member. Um, so uh, if you buy if you buy a lot of stuff, then you will definitely get your money's worth on CDN. If you're if, if you buy a CDN Plus membership, uh, Interstellar. This one I opened, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, well, I have seen it before uh, in the cinema, um, and I liked it a lot. But I haven't seen it since. Uh, so I'm excited to do that. Uh, Saving Private Ryan. I have this on DVD. Very good, but I needed it on Blu-ray. Gonna watch that again, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, another for, um, Tom Hanks, another Forrest Gump movie. <laughs> another Tom Hanks movie is uh, Forrest Gump, big classic, which I feel is a little bit overpraised. I don't like the word overrated, so I'm saying over overpraised. The same thing, I guess, but overrated feels so arrogant uh, somehow. Uh, but I do feel like it's a bit overpraised. Um, it, it's a really good movie, but is it, is it, does it deserve to be on number 11 spot on IMDb, whatever it is, 14? Uh, I guess, you know, IMDb can go fuck themselves, but, uh, no, no, but I, I don't really agree with, uh, you know, ex <laughs> I don't really agree with uh, that rating, and I don't, I don't agree with, you know, that being one of the best American films of all time. Really, but it's really enjoyable. Uh, but uh, this one is better. <laughs> Birdman. Um, I saw this in the in the movie theater with a couple of friends, and we all really liked it. And I had to see this again now. I just really felt like seeing Birdman again. So I got that, and I liked it a lot more. I mean, e even more. I mean, I, I say I say a lot more, which goes to show how much I liked it now. It's just a fantastic film. I mean, everything about it is so great. I mean, everything they, I mean, the, the two of the main decisions they decided to make. I mean, they were the per perfect decisions for that movie. The first one being the music with the drums, perfect soundtrack to the movie, pretty brave and risky in a way, but perfect. The second one being the cinematography, obviously. Both of these add to the movie so much, and the way time becomes ambiguous with the cinematography, they've worked out really well because. Sometimes there will be kind of sweeping or circling cameras, like there's one press conference, or not, not a conference, but, uh, well, he, some journalists is interviewing, um, what's his name, Regan, Regan, yeah, Regan, <laughs> Michael Keaton's character, 
he's been interviewed and I think he's just had some kind of rage um, whatever he <laughs> th thrown some stuff into the, uh, the the walls which I don't know if that's I mean the, there's ambiguity in this movie too I mean with that scene and then the end I don't want to give anything away but um, but anyway so he's done that and then it kind of circles around in the same take and then there are some um, some journalists sitting there interviewing him all in one take and then keeps turning and then much later he's coming into the frame again and then it's time for uh, rehearsal or whatever that's one take but obviously it's not real time and the way that they, they do that a few times in the movie and I love how they do that I don't know why <laughs> but I just love how they skip ahead in time in the same take I haven't seen something like that before and that's um, maybe I have I don't know but it just feels really original original and I love how they do that Mr. Turner uh, this was uh, this was good I can see why some people wouldn't like it very much uh, because it's not um, it's not sensationalized in the slightest but that's what I like about it I mean since it, it's not very dramatic it's not very exciting it doesn't have a main um, plot but it's about this this painter uh, J.W. Turner I think his name is played by um, uh, Timothy Spall uh, it's directed by Mike Lee and it just uh, chronicles um, it doesn't really it's not really specific it's, it's not really time specific or whatever but it, I think I read the last 25 years maybe of his life so maybe the last third of his life I don't know um, and it just it just chronic it just uh, depicts some of the events in his life and that's it nothing really dramatic about it I mean it's nothing um, it's not your typical Hollywood movie I mean you know it's it, it, it's um, yeah it's it's uh, it's pretty refresh re <laughs> refreshing in that sense I thought and I really liked it I really enjoyed it um, okay and then we have uh, Pirates 4 like I said before so and I talked about that okay and these next ones they were really cheap um, three of, I don't, I, don't, I'd, I think I got three of these uh, three of them I got with that money and two of them I got with other orders because these were only 19 crowns I think but you can only add one for each order but I have free shipping over 100 crowns so I made several orders <laughs> and I added one to each order so I got these for uh, practically practically two dollars each uh, so I got a bunch of Disney movies um, Beauty and the Beast um, The Jungle Book uh, I'm collecting these movies on steelbooks by the way but I kinda wanna have them in the Swedish language as well just because uh, I might wanna watch them in Swedish one day or whatever maybe I'll have kids that's a foreign thought probably not <laughs> you never know maybe these will come in handy then um, Snow White um, and uh, so those were the, the three ones I got with that money but then I also got uh, The Lion King with a, a previous um, uh, purchase and I also got Ghostbusters 1 and 2 on Blu-ray so I finally have these on Blu-ray I rewatched re god damn it I can't speak uh, rewatched them uh, I don't know a few months ago maybe and I love them but um, they were pretty poor quality on the DVDs I noticed so I got the blurries now uh, two bucks each for those so that's really good um, okay now let's um, yeah what the hell let's let's talk about some stuff that I got from CDON that I, um, so sorry no sorry disc shop that I picked up today uh, I ordered them and I picked up the package today so speaking of uh, Tarantino um, mentioned that I've been trying to pick up Blu-rays. Um, Blu <laughs> been trying to get all the Blu-rays from uh, the Coen Brothers. I have a lot, a lot to go from them. I have a bunch on DVD, but I need to upgrade them. Um, Tarantino and uh, Scorsese. So here's one from uh, Tarantino, Inglourious Bastards, which I have on DVD, but now I have it on Blu-ray. And with this, I have all the Tarantino movies on Blu-ray, which I am very happy about. Uh, not uh, death proof, but I, <laughs> that's the eighth, eighth film. No, not that. <laughs> Sorry, Hateful Eight is the eighth film by Tarantino, which he made very clear on the poster. 
um, and Death Proof would be the ninth one, so I, I guess he doesn't count Def Death Proof himself as a Tarantino movie. Uh, but I don't I don't have Death Proof, Proof on Blu-ray, but the, all the other ones I have on Blu-ray, so I'm happy about that. Uh, and I, I have seen, you know, Inglourious Bastards on when I bought the DVD years and years ago. Really liked it, but I have to see it again. I think I got confused in the end for some reason. Um, whereas my attention these days are not perfect. It's much better than it used than, than it used to be, so um, I think I missed some stuff. But I remember loving the opening. I was so captivated immediately by the opening of Inglorious Bastards, and same with um, Django Unchained. So maybe he has um, a way of capturing the viewer's uh, attention right away. I think Tarantino, yeah, thinking of his filmography, that's something he usually does do with his movies. Um, okay. Uh, so, Inglourious Bastards, I'm looking forward to seeing that again. Uh, these were about 50 crowns each, by the way. Um, Casino, a Scorsese movie. <laughs> uh, really happy to have this on Blu-ray. I have the DVD. Um, and uh, it's a fantastic movie, I haven't, have just haven't seen it in so long. Uh, okay, now, three Swedish movies. that th These are usually um, quite pricey. Uh, they usually don't go down in price, these uh, releases. Um, they're usually ranging between 100 and 150. Uh, these were only 50 as part of a sale on, on disc, disc shop. So I got three of them. Um, I think I, I, was, I was reminded of uh, Swedish cinema and me wanting to watch some more uh, modern uh, movies uh, when I watched the, um, the Oscars, uh, which is pathetic. It's a pathetic comparison because um, yeah, no, nobody's there anymore. <laughs> I mean, half the prize, half the awards, half the important people were accepted. I mean, half the um, awards that all the you know important people won were accepted um, on behalf of them or you know by other people. So nobody shows up, and um, anybody can buy a ticket apparently. If you, if you just pay for it, you can get a ticket and get in. I, I don't know. It, it, it just strikes me as. Um, yeah, I mean, Sweden as a country, obviously, we don't produce nearly as many movies as the States or anything, but it is the biggest um, film uh, award ceremony, ceremony that, that we have, and it's really prestigious to win a, a Golden Beetle, I guess it would be translated into really ugly award, really ugly. <laughs> and uh, for that reason, it's, I guess, the most, I guess it would be the Swedish Oscars, but I've, I've mentioned this before, it just feels kind of sad watching it because um, it's, uh, I don't know, it feels like if, if a movie with a certain actor or of a certain, of a certain budget is uh, being made in Sweden or ha have been released the previous year, it's gonna be not, it's gonna be nominated no matter how bad it is, because there's not, not enough movies to choose from, so they have to pick the big ones, that's the way it feels. Uh, however, there are some good ones or some in interesting ones that has come out in the past few years Few years that I am interested in and three, three of them are here um, and then there are a few from this year also that I'm interested in. So there are, there are good movies coming out, it's just not, um, just not, not a lot. <laughs> but uh, here we have, uh, and I don't know, these don't really have, uh, may maybe they do have en English titles, but because these are Swedish releases, uh, although they are all, they are, they are all English friendly, so if you don't know Swedish, you can still watch them and understand it, provided that you know English, but I think you probably do if you watch this video. Shuvhe <sighs> editor. The, the Honor of a Thief, I guess that, that would be. Uh, this one I'm really excited to have. Um, Flocken. The Herd. Uh, maybe I don't need to translate these. Um, yeah, these, these three all have really interesting plots, by the way. And uh, Efterskalv, uh, Aftershock, I guess. Uh, so all these three, I don't know when these are from. Now I don't know where they went. Uh, well, they're from a couple years ago. This one is from 2015. I think Shuv uh, Heder, uh, the first one I showed you, is also from 2015. Uh, Flocken, I don't know when that's from, maybe... I don't know, but it's recent. And I love these uh, 
I have another one by the way um, and I'll just show you uh, the spine here with this one uh, this one is called Hotel, this one I found at a second hand store I just thought that I'd show it to you because it's on the theme of Swedish films, modern films and it's released by the same company um, Try Art Films um, there's not a lot of uh, companies that release stuff like this in Sweden but uh, as, you know, as a collector they're very attractive because they have this little banner here or whatever you want to call it Try, I don't know if you can see that but uh, Try Art Films presents then they're numbered here <laughs> I don't know if you can see that like I said uh, and then the spines look similar uh, you know you know what let's let's just demonstrate there we go see my point they look fantastic ne next to each other <laughs> they all match up in terms of font and um, how the text is leveled and all that stuff I think So, uh, if I come across those those releases, I'm gonna get them. Uh, oh, you, you know what? One second. I found another one that I forgot about. Also, one of those releases. This one is called um, Flikuna, The Monkey Girls. Um, I've seen this and I did not like it, but since it's one of those releases <laughs> and since I've started collecting those I decided to get it, so I'll, I'll be getting all of those if I can find them uh, I mean th these are not numbered, those other ones they were numbered to 58 I think so imagine having 58 of them next to each other yeah I'm, I'm working on it <laughs> uh, sorry I'm gonna get back to this uh, real quick uh, Hotel this is with Alicia Vikander, this is from 2013, before she, um, um, well, before she made it big in Hollywood. Um, I'm not a fan of her, she's good, but I don't know, she's a real actor, actor, actor. I feel like she really acts, she's not a character, but she's acting as if she's that character. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like she overdoes it, but she's a good, really good actress. But I just feel like she's trying really hard. <sighs> that's that's a bit unfair. Uh, I'm I'm just not a fan. I don't know. Maybe I'll 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 turn around. I like New Mirror Pass really, a lot, uh, but Alicia Vikander haven't really warmed up to her yet. But she's pretty good in this. Pretty different from. Um, well, I haven't seen the Danish girl and haven't seen Life Between the Oceans, whatever. I don't want, I don't really want to see those. But this is pretty, a pretty different movie from those. Uh, but uh, it's with her. And uh, sorry, no. Only Swedish subtitles on that, unfortunately. Uh, but it was pretty good. It was, uh, yeah. I kind of, yeah, I liked it, I guess. I pretty much liked it. <laughs> um, you know what? Speaking of Coen Brothers, let's just talk about uh, this one real quick. Ha! Huh. Look what I found. <laughs> if you look closely, you will notice that this, this is pretty smashed up. So I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Right here, for example. Once again, the TV is far away, I can't really tell if it's um, coming off clearly or not. But this was pretty, pretty dinged up when it, when it arrived. And I tried to fix it up as much as I could, but it was uh, it, it, it looks pretty good, actually, uh, in, under the circumstances. Because I got this used from uh, Amazon for £8, which just seemed too good to be true to me, because this is always so expensive from there, so £8 from Music Magpie. That's the bad part. Uh, buying something like this from Music Magpie, they shipped this in a, in a jiffy bag. I don't know how they did it. It was taped. It was a mess. I mean, the tape was a mess, and then when I had opened it, I couldn't even figure out what was the op what was the end, whatever. So I don't know exactly if it was just one bad. I don't know exactly how, what they did, but somehow, somehow this was in, in a jiffy bag, and uh, <laughs> being shipped overseas uh, from the UK in a jiffy bag. 
this kind of fragile. This is the big Lebowski, by the way. Did I not? Did I not say that? I think I just took that for granted. If I didn't say that, you can you can tell though. It's the bowling ball edition, uh, 10th anniversary limited edition. Um, but yeah, this box is pr is pretty fragile as it is. I mean, pretty cheap plastic stuff. Um, so I was not expecting perfect condition, uh, but it, it's fine. Honestly, I'm happy with this. I think I would have bought this even if I knew that it was gonna be it, it was gonna look like this, because on the shelf it's gonna look fine. I mean, if I hold it up like this to you, does it look damaged? I don't know, but I think it looks probably looks pretty fine. I mean, it looks okay. Um, and you know, um, it's one of one of those. Um, bigger collector's editions that I've been wanting to get for a while. Uh, haven't been too crazy about those before, but now that I have more room, I, I can display stuff on the top of my bookshelves. Um, I am um, able to uh, buy some more bigger editions, and that's one that I've been having my eyes on for, uh, well, for a long time actually. Um, uh, I, I, I've seen people having those, I mean, in like the first wave <laughs> of DVD updaters on YouTube. That was something I saw pretty often, and um, I haven't seen it since. I mean, I, now it's all about all about Blu-rays, but um, that's um, yeah something I re remember seeing. So I have a lot to go, believe it or not. I mean, there's a shitload of stuff to go, but um, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, the battery is not blinking yet, and the other one is charging, so I'm just gonna keep going. Um, but I'm gonna turn this around because I have some. Some editions from Arrow and um, B5 and Eureka, maybe? No? Maybe, maybe not, but uh, 88 Films too. Yeah, so, so, anyway, some nice releases that I'm going to show you that I bought uh, recently, um, some of them anyway, that I want to kind of want to focus on the rele releases themselves. And so I'm going to turn the camera around and, um, and I have to clear the table, but <laughs> after I've done that, we're gonna take a look at them because I feel like they deserve some more, some more attention than just this. So I'll do that, and uh, I will get back to you. <clears throat> and after a short break, we are back. Um, I feel like I've had to modify my whole living room for this video. It's so crammed in here, or so cramped, or whatever. <laughs> so, so little extra room because I have so much stuff all over the place, and I have to move all the movies over here, and then I have to move stuff out of the way so that I have room everything and um, it's uh, it's a lot of work <laughs> no, it really isn't but um, okay we're done with everything that needed to be done and I'm ready to show you the the nice stuff uh, <laughs> uh, so you've been waiting for a while for this I guess you might have skipped ahead I don't know um, but I, I have a bunch of nice releases that I want to yeah like I said put some night some some more focus on make sure that I highlight these and the first one I'm not saving saving the best for last here uh, I start with one of the best uh, Decalogue and other television works by Krzysztof Kislowski really nice set this uh, this was announced by Criterion and I was really happy uh, because that, that that was one of the titles that I had been most anticipating and most hoping that they would release and then they did well they announced it but then shortly after Arrow did the same Arrow Academy However, this this release is superior because it has um, well, it has a bunch of other stuff. Uh, it has Pedestrian Subway, First Love, Personnel, The Calm, Short Working Day, and a documentary called <clears throat> Still Alive, and some other stuff uh, which I don't know. I mean, those those uh, titles in orange, they're not on the um, on the Criterion uh, Still Alive. I don't know, but the other ones are not. Um, well, well, you have them here. You have the titles here too on the spines. Um, I don't know about these other shorts in yellow, or I mean these other other featurettes in yellow, if those are on the Criterion. Um, there are special features on the Criterion which are not on this, but I do think that the other television works makes makes this edition better than the Criterion. And I love the set. I ha I had to sort of warm up to the cover, but uh, watching Refamiliarizing, no. <laughs> is that a word? Refamiliarizing? Re re anyway, reacquainting myself <laughs> with uh, the, the the series, it makes a lot of sense to have 
these buildings here. And we, I mean, I, I kind of realized that before too, but I realize realize it more now. And the more I look at it, the more it makes sense. But anyway, um, <clears throat> I've actually only seen the first three so far, the first three discs. So Decalogue one to six, and those are the those are the ones that I had seen from before. Uh, and I, I went through them uh, quite a while ago, and then stopped, and I, I haven't continued with the seventh one yet, and I have to do that. Uh, because 7, 8, 9 and 10 I've never seen. So I have to get back into it uh, and uh, watch those. But I think the fact that I watched all of these ones twice makes it okay to kind of take a break here because I know them pretty well now. Um, and uh, well, yeah, like I said, I, well, okay, let me clarify. I've seen, seen them twice because I had the uh, Artificial Eye DVD of the first five. Uh, and then the second DVD, I never got that. Uh, and then the sixth one which is which is the sixth one um, a short film film about love I think but yeah and I have the longer version of that on DVD so uh, that's why I've seen those six before uh, but I, I'm gonna get in you know get back to that and watch the um, the rest eventually uh, then this was a really really exciting release um, by BFI and um, <clears throat> this is Napoleon uh, unfortunately, I mean, I, I hate these stickers uh, because sometimes when you remove them, if you have a dusty home like I do, the dust gets under the stickers and then when you put them back, there's dust in between. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, it's a, it was a bit smashed here. Apparently people um, have been complaining about receiving this particular set damaged and this is the damage that I have to put up with, but honestly, the spine is the most important. <laughs> because that's what you'll see on the shelf and uh, for an anal collector if the spine is damaged well then you know that's a deal breaker <laughs> but uh, for me if it, I mean you know something else on on the um, anyway let's move on uh, <laughs> the movie I haven't seen yet uh, because it's quite long it's like um, let's see um, five and a half hours long so I haven't gotten to this yet, and it might take a while, but um, yeah, it looks pretty pretty great, and uh, I was excited to um, to uh, to find out about this release back um, maybe yeah I think it might have been like a year ago now yeah it probably was I found out found out about this release a year ago, and then it came out a few months ago, uh, and yeah so yeah pretty exciting to follow that, uh, and uh, oh I just noticed now that's wider than a normal Blu-ray interesting <clears throat> okay uh, some more arrow stuff here uh, arrow video uh, to live and die in LA this was really quite fun really stylish uh, really uh, you know strong vivid colors uh, uh, made um, <laughs> directed by William William Friedkin uh, starring um, John Pankow and um, William Willem Dafoe uh, and especially uh, William Peterson um, really good, really good uh, film. Um, not too much to say, but a really good cop kind of crime film um, action. Really good car chase in this. Speaking of car chases, I talked about Bullet before. This, the car chase in this, had me. Um, I was much more entertained by that. Not as slick and maybe. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but not as slick and. Um, uh, for fuck's sake, well, but it, it's dirtier and uh, kind of, um, yeah, uh, more chaotic. Um, but I really enjoyed the, the chase in this. It was just such a blast to watch. Um, so there's some action stuff in this too. Just a really, a tremendously entertaining movie. Um, yeah, really enjoyed that. And then, this one I, I kind of caved in and, and got this, but I'm glad I did. I think it might be out of print now. And I think I would have regretted this if I didn't, because this box set is absolutely beautiful. And I think the movie is really good. I mean, okay, I'll just show it to you. It's Donnie Darko. But when I found out about this release, I wasn't really... I mean, a lot of people, they expressed uh, enthusiasm over this uh, in the comments, you know. Um, and I was a little bit surprised to see Arrow release this. Because I've always sort of seen this as a mainstream film. I mean, I know it's a bit confusing. Uh, all of this I've seen is on a very dark, you know, thick old TV in school with the lights on, I th well, I don't know if the lights were on, but it, it was really hard to see 
uh, just just a few years ago when there was, I mean, I think the teacher had to leave and do something, so she, she just put on a movie, and she put on Donnie Darko, and we watched a little bit of it, but we, we probably, I mean, she wasn't there, so we talked, I guess, <laughs> and yeah, it, it, yeah I, I got nothing out of it. However, now I can watch it properly, and I can check out all the extras too, and I will get into this, I'm, I'm gonna dig into this uh, eventually, I just haven't found the time yet, because obviously I bought a lot of stuff lately, uh, but yeah, I'm really, I'm, I really am happy that I bought this. I'm not regret, 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 oh, regretting this in the slightest. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to expect really, but it's with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, and I love this, um, the shiny kind of metallic look on the cover here. It looks really great, and I love the font on the spine, and the the silvery shininess to that too. It's just a really nice box set, really nice. Um, yeah, so that's Donnie Darko. Uh, I think I'll probably like that. Um, then, <laughs> we have something very different. Uh, the Giver. This one I had never heard of before. Apparently based on a uh, manga series. Uh, this is directed by Screaming Mad George, who uh, made the effects for Society among other films, and uh, some part, I mean, the end of Bride of Reanimator, he, he made the effects for that. And he has a very specific style. But here we got to direct the movie, and I forget exactly how it went down, that whole thing. Uh, there is a, an interview with Brian Usna, who was in, I guess, sort of maybe in talks of directing it, but he didn't, he just pr produced it. But uh, yeah, so Brian Usna, Usna directed Society, so I, I wanted to get this because I love... Screaming Mad George's effects. I love Brian Usna's stuff. Well, I, I appreciate him as a filmmaker and just as a person. Uh, so those two names alone just made me want to get this, no matter what it was. Uh, and I, I watched it with <laughs> with uh, open eyes or whatever. And uh, very. I mean, has anyone seen The Giver? If if you have, then <laughs> maybe you can excuse my um, lack of words. I don't know how to sum it up. <laughs> It's a bit, it, it's it's okay. As you can see here, it's, it's a 12, contains moderate fantasy violence, moderate, moderate horror, so it's not Society or Bride of Reanimator-esque. It, it's, well, it, well, it kind of is, actually. There, there are some effects that is reminiscent of that kind of stuff, like the ending of Society, but not much, and not as graphic, because this is mainly a goofy movie. Uh, I guess kind of violent, but, you know, not graphic at all, not uh, bloody. Uh, I think this might have been cut down slightly, and I think, I think actually I saw a comment by Mr. Parker, a fellow old updater on YouTube, and he commented on the fact that this was not the uncut release, but I got, I got this anyway. Uh, so I don't know how much stuff has been cut out, but th there's not a lot of, lot of blood, the, no, there's not, but... Um, it's. I mean, I, I just enjoy the the goofiness of it and the silliness. It has a good a good cast too. Uh, Mark Hamill is in this actually, from Star Wars to The Giver. <laughs> they did, did they did not put that on the poster. Um, and then let's see. Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Michael Berryman is in this, and Jeffrey Combs is in this, and he, uh, of course, uh, was in in Reanimator, which I guess I think I think Brian Usna produced that. Yeah. And in that he was, of course, I think Dr. West. In this he plays Dr. East. <laughs> so yeah, a little bit funny. And, and he is some kind of scientist. And Jeffrey Combs is, um, he's great. Um, and then there was someone else too that I remember. Oh yeah, the other guy from Reanimator. The, uh, I don't know, I, I don't remember him, what his part was in Reanimator. But he's the, the head at the end. He get, gets his head cut off. And that, yeah, he was in this too. So pretty, pretty good cast, I gotta say. Uh, an enjoyable movie. There is a sequel to this, or a second Giver movie, which apparently is a lot bloodier. Um, oh, I should mention this is directed by not only Screaming Mad George, but also someone else. And I think the sequel is directed by only someone else, <laughs> not Screaming Mad George, whatever his name is. Oh, here it is, uh, Steve. Oh. Oh, you motherfucker. Steve Wang. I think he might have directed the second one on his own. So I don't know what happened there. Why Mad George didn't get to... Any, I don't know. But I've heard that is better than this one. 
more truthful to the manga perhaps. So kind of hoping that Arrow will pick that up too and release that as well. We shall see. Um, let's see, I think I have something else by Arrow, or am I mistaken? No, there is one more thing from Arrow. Um, okay, these following things I got in two different packages uh, a few days ago. Opened it all up at the same time and it was one of the best mail days ever. Because, uh, you'll see, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff here. Uh, Black Society Trilogy, <clears throat> uh, Takashi Miike. Uh, yeah, you can see the titles here. These are the three movies. I've not seen them yet and I haven't seen them from before either. But I like Takashi Miike's crazy style, so definitely wanted to pick that up. And then... Uh, <coughs> in that first package was also um, okay let's see one film from the new indicator release I mean indicator line from powerhouse films let's see um, powerhouse films uk and yeah this is the indica indicator line very reminiscent of arrow I don't know if there's something I don't know if that's just a ripoff or if they're Associated? I have no idea. But anyway, <coughs> this one is uh, yeah, Ten Rillington Place. There's a few different ones that look kind of interesting. Body double. I might get Christine, maybe. Uh, but there's a, f a few coming up that I want to get, like Fat City, and Bunny Lake Gone Missing. I think that's what it's called. I, I want to get those two. But for now, this one was the, the only one that I felt like I had to get. Uh, Richard Attenborough. Uh, oh, John Hurt, yeah, he recently died. Um, that's sad. I didn't know that he had cancer. Uh, so yeah, rest in peace. Uh, oh, and John Hurt and Emmanuel Riva, they die, I think, on the same day. They both died recently. I just found out about that. I think today, yeah. So that that sucks. But um, yes, yeah, so rest, rest in peace, John Hurt. Uh, I, I forgot that he, that I, he was uh, on the cover here. I didn't know that he was in this. Maybe I saw it before, but I, I forgot. Anyway, uh, Richard Attenborough, he um, he plays the main guy here, a serial serial killer, based on a real, um, yeah, John Reginald Christie, who turned his backyard into a burial ground, and that sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds great. There's a picture here, kind of. Oh, maybe I'm I'm not gonna look it up now. Actually, it's gonna take too long. But uh, yeah, I wanna see this um, pretty badly. Uh, 1971. Uh, and yeah, I do like the, the look of this indicator release. Uh, okay, and um, then... Uh, okay, uh, in that package we also had uh, one out of three from 88 Films. Uh, my first 88 Films um, release releases, and I'm gonna get more for sure. Uh, I, I, I'm kicking myself now, because Amazon had three for 20, uh, and I, I mean, they, they do have that offer still, but they had a bunch of uh, um, of 88 films um, releases in that offer, but now they don't anymore, and now they're like almost £10 each, and I was like, for fuck's sakes, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping that they're going to put those back in the offer so that I can get some more. Uh, <laughs> anyway, now, uh, Intruder, um, a new release. Um, I've known about this movie for years, uh, and now that it got a Blu-ray release in the UK, I figured I should pick it up. Uh, this is released previously in the US. I don't know, maybe by Synapse, um, but I love this cover, and I, I don't, I don't need all the special features. And this was only ten pounds, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to be greedy here. Uh, ten pounds is is a good price. It's just that three for twenty is is better. Uh, but anyway, Intruder. I watched it, and it was it was really quite fun. Uh, a fun slasher um, directed by Scott Spiegel. I think he produced Evil Dead. Uh, and speaking of Evil Dead, he has his buddies here, Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi. Pretty cool to see Sam Raimi in an acting part. I mean, he's obviously not, not an actor, he's not a good actor, he's not good in this, but he, I mean, I'm, I'm not criticizing his performance or anything, I'm just saying that he, he's clear, clear, clearly not in the business as an actor, and you can tell. But he, it was really fun to see him, in the, see him in this, and I'm guessing he did it because he's bu buddies with Scott, Scott Spiegel. Uh, Bruce Campbell, though, is just in a quick scene towards the end, but uh, this was a good slasher, really well filmed. Uh, yeah, just the editing, the, the cinematography, uh, and the location of the grocery store, the supermarket, I enjoy, because I, I, I've always loved supermarket scenes. I don't know why, I'm, I'm a bit weird, but um, yeah, this takes place in a supermarket. And some good, um, 
kind of camaraderie in this too. Uh, yeah, a good fun slasher, I, I liked it. And then um, I do have two more 88 Films releases, but just for the hell of it, um, I'm going to show you the, the last two um, uh, titles from this package, uh, and they were all from, Am uh, that was from Amazon. Um, and then the other two uh, 88 Films releases, they were from 88, 88 Films themselves. Now my throat is getting <laughs> tickly. <laughs> I've been talking too long. <coughs> uh, the first one here is Dragon Blade. I got this now because it was just three pounds, three pounds from Amazon, so not a bad deal. And if if this would have been, if it would have been like this, I would have not, I would not have bought this. But I am a big Jackie Chan fan, so um, I had to get this. And it's not supposed to be that great. It doesn't look great, but it's, I mean, it, it's uh, it's Jackie Chan, so. It's not, it's not a Jackie Chan movie, I guess, but he's in it as one of the main guys. And then this one, I'm really happy to have, really, really am. Uh, and I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to doing so um, soon. Um, and it's a new movie. This was nominated last year for Best Foreign Film. It did not win. Uh, Son, of Saul, Saul, Son of Saul won. And it should, I mean, it was that was a great film. Uh, and I haven't seen this yet, so I don't know if I will like this more. It doesn't matter, but Embrace of the Serpent, a very nice release. Um, different slipcover um, from the uh, the keep case design. I mean, you know, uh, different uh, artwork. Um, this one I've been wanting to get for quite a while, and I just kept putting it off. But now it was finally time, and I cannot wait to see this. This looks so good. Uh, the more I've thought about this, the more I want to see it. And now ha having this in my hands. I mean, I mean, sometimes for me it can feel anticlimactic having hyped the movie up for like some years, years sometimes, or at least a year, whatever, and then finally, you, finally you get it, and it's like, huh? Well, now I have it. I guess I can watch it. It's not not supposed to be like that, but that's sometimes how it is. You keep hearing too much about it, and it becomes a little bit anticlimactic when you actually receive it. Maybe that's just me. I don't know, but this one is the opposite. When I received this, it's like. Holy shit, I own this movie now. That's incredible. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> and now to the last two that I got from 88, 88 Films. Um, you know, the actual website. Uh, Once Upon a Crime. This one I added to my Amazon wishlist years ago and I forgot about it. But now this is out of print and really expensive. So I'm happy to see a Blu-ray. I don't know, maybe there is a US Blu-ray of this, but... Um, I, uh, it was more convenient for me to buy this from the UK. Um, this is a really good cast. John Candy, James Belushi, Richard Lewis. Uh, just uh, the three. I mean, I'm a big Richard Lewis fan because of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and of course John Candy and James Belushi. They're great. Uh, I gotta say, I don't know Sybil Shepherd. Who is? Uh, I think I recognize the name, but I'm not quite sure who it is. Um, this is directed by Eugene Levy too. He's not in this, I am pretty sure, but he did direct it. That's quite cool. I am a big Eugene Levy fan as well. He's one of my favorite actors. Well, maybe not, uh, but I do like him a lot uh, since since the American Pie days, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I haven't seen this yet. It is unsealed. I was actually gonna watch it uh, tonight, but then I suddenly felt very bored and uh, depressed. <laughs> Depression sets in very quickly sometimes. <laughs> For no reason at all. Um, so yeah, that was an honest little thing that I just said. But uh, I've, been, I've been honest before. Maybe, maybe a bit out of place to say that here. I don't know. But uh, I was going to watch it, but not, then I just didn't. Uh, but I am happy to have it. Uh, and uh, I will enjoy this, I'm sure. It's going to be cheesy fun, uh, I'm sure. Uh, from the 80s, I guess. Um, no, 90, 1992. So, you know, that's proves how much I know. And uh, <laughs> back to the other battery that I was charging. Had not finished charging, so we'll see how long this will last, but the video is really long by now. I just checked the clips and I think, um, yeah, it's quite long. Okay, uh, the last one is uh, one that I cannot wait to see. It's called Seeding of a Ghost. This is number five in 88 Films uh, Asia collection, and the only one so far that I've felt um, that I needed to pick up. Um, this one looks insane. I mean, just look here at some of the um, adjectives and uh, descriptions on the back. Uh, it's an erotic gore fest. 
okay it's um, it's got some blood splattering nature over the top blood splattering nature and gross out shock levels okay um, there is blood spurting and body exploding glory and it's one of the goriest films in Hong Kong ever made so I'm sure I will <laughs> I will enjoy this it looks looks very creepy I mean what what's going on here what is that that looks unbelievably creepy I don't know what's going on but it's gonna, it's gonna be fun to find out I haven't gotten to this yet but uh, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to it a lot uh, I'm gonna get to that soon uh, okay let's move these out of the way and let's talk about one more release that I put out pulled out here um, I did um, pull out the stuff that I wanted to try to include in this video and I have had time for most of it almost all of it actually I have one more thing although I might have to adjust the tripod a little bit um, and let's get that stuff out of the frame and it's another big box set it is Kung Fu Hustle limited edition collector's gift set this one I actually have another uh, Kung Fu Hustle set down the way which is um, I don't know if that's any good I mean I don't know how that looks but I just had to get another one because uh, <laughs> there's about three of them that are not too difficult to to find uh, well this one is, is actually but I was lucky with this uh, I'll get to that soon uh, but three of them that look pretty um, pretty nice I guess and so it would be fun to have those three on the top of a shelf and then like the that pink kind of pop art steelbook in the middle because I do love this movie so I want to have a few different editions. Uh, this one I got from Tradera Swedish auction website that I've mentioned several times over the past year, year or two. Uh, and this one was not, I, I, I put in a bid for, I think the starting bid was about $20, $20 and uh, I bid $20 and then nobody else overbid me. And the guy who sold this lived in the same city as I am so he just came over here and dropped it off, which was nice of him. Um, but let's see what we have in here. This is uh, pretty cool. I'm not gonna watch. I'm not gonna watch this this DVD. I'm gonna get the Blu-ray, like I said, the Steelbook, and watch it again eventually. Uh, but well, let's start with this. This is a really nice kind of leathery book-ish. Well, it's a book with a DVD in it. It's not a book, but it, it kind of looks like it. Uh, but yeah, so here we have the. Um, the DVD. Honestly, I don't really know where this release is from. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, but uh, it looks nice, and that's mostly what I care about. Um, then we have some. Um, uh, num I don't know what what they call these numbers. Uh, some something certificate. I don't know. So you can see my number here, and then. Um, What's this? A photo? No. That's just a booklet, I guess. I don't think this is English friendly. Uh, no. Not really, no. Um, and then this is the photo book, which is actually hardcover. Uh, it's not exclusive or, any or anything, it's just a few pictures or whatever from the movie. Um, but, you know. I don't remember. I don't know what's going on here. What, why is he blurred out? I don't remember. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. Uh, I've referred to my cousins a couple of times in this video, but but one of my cousins introduced me to this movie many years ago, and um, I loved it. I've seen it a few times since then, uh, but it's been a been a while, like I said. So uh, yeah, but I have to have this set. But maybe the coolest thing in this set is uh, is this. Um, it's a um, yeah. Now I forget the uh, English word of the, for this, um, but it's uh, Stephen Chow's hand. Um, I don't know what the material is. Might be plastic. I honestly don't really know. But this is apparently Stephen Chow's hand. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, the ultimate test. It's gonna be in the box. It, you, you're not gonna be able to see this. But I guess I could take it out and have it. If I'm gonna make a kung fu hustle shrine, well, display, then I guess I, I guess I could have this out like that. 
Although it should have been the opposite, perhaps. Although maybe you're supposed to have it like that. Yeah, I was gonna say it should have been um, um, diagonal or whatever in the other direction, so in the other direction, so that I could display it uh, on the shelf. But I guess it's um, well, maybe since it is so high up, you're gonna look at it from from below. So maybe that's gonna be good. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the uh, the gift set um, that I don't know where it's from. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> But that's kind of cool. Um, yeah, got that a while ago. Uh, but that's that's sort of it, I think. Um, now, at the end of the video, here we are. Um, I wanted to talk about the Oscars, Oscars a little bit. I'm gonna go to the IMDb page and and um, and see the nominate. Check out the nominations. Just talk about the movies a little bit uh, because I feel like it. <laughs> It's about a month left, at least when I film this, it's possible that when I actually upload this, uh, because last time I did a long video like this of the, kind of the si a similar nature, it took me about a week to upload it, so, you know, to get it done, so it might do to take the same amount of time this time, I don't know, <laughs> but um, right now it's about a month left until the Oscars. Um, no real surprises, I guess. Uh, I mean, best best pictures. I've only seen Hacksaw Ridge and Hell or High Water, and it doesn't look like I'll be able to see any more until the ceremony. Uh, that's the um, yeah. I mean, the the whole Oscar politics or whatever. Um, how well the the strategic. Um, well, how how it's strate strategically better, I guess to release a movie late in the year, you know, in the Oscar season, uh, if, you know, it, apparently there's, uh, you know, uh, higher chances of it getting nominated, which it shouldn't be like that, but um, I guess it is, and, and because of that I don't get to see them, <laughs> because I, I, well, I, I don't really go to the cinema that often, and all of them aren't released here, uh, and I don't download, so that leaves Blu-ray releases, and they are, uh, they're, the Blu-rays are not released until later, so I can't usually, uh, well, at least now that I actually buy new movies on day one, I didn't used to do that before, but now I do, and I don't get to see them before the Oscars, and I, I, I would like to have, I, I would like to have to have seen the movies when the Oscars happen. Um, so the other ones I'm not going to be able, be able to see. I would have been able to see Arrival in the movie theater, but. Um, I just never did. Uh, but Fences, I'm not really that interested in, to be honest, and same with Hidden Figures, although, yeah, I mean, they look okay, I guess. Uh, but Arrival, I really want to see. Uh, La La Land, Manchester by the Sea, and Moonlight, I really want to see. Uh, and Lion, I've actually have, I, I actually pre-ordered pre that, so. Uh, yeah, and, the, you know, the, the I'm not going to go through everything, obviously, but I'll mention a few things. Um, like I said, I'm happy that Viggo Mortensen uh, was uh, nominated. I did, I remember s saying to my mom months ago, uh, I, we, I was talking about Captain Fantastic, I think, and I said that, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's going to be nominated for an Oscar for that, and I had, hadn't even seen the movie yet, and I, fe I feel like I w almost went out on a limb saying that, but I happen to be right, so I'm going to pat myself on the shoulder. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy for him, though. I don't know if he cares about the Oscars, but um, I don't think he's gonna win. <laughs> I think Ryan Gosling or Casey Affleck will win, even though I haven't seen the movies. But that's you know that's um, what I've heard. And then Isabel Huppert, Huppert, whatever, is nominated for Best Actress, which is kind of cool. And I really want to see Elle, but it takes forever for the Blu-ray to be released in a non-French, English-friendly release. Why don't the French just put English subtitles on their Blu-rays so that I can buy them and watch them? <laughs> I have to wait months for an English-friendly release. Okay, Jeff Bridges is nominated for Hell or, Hell or High Water, which is pretty cool. Uh, I did really enjoy that movie. <clears throat> <sighs> Let's see, Best Directing, Mel Gibson was nominated. That's kind of cool to see him, after a few tough years for him, uh, kind of be accepted kind of, yeah, 
to be welcomed back into the business, I guess. People seem to have embraced him again uh, after after all those scandals. Um, uh, so that's kind of the, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, I'm, I, I am a, I am. I would say that I, I am a Mel Gibson fan. So you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, best achievement in cinematography, Silence. That's one that I have been really looking forward to. Uh, let's see. That's only nominated for one Oscar for silent for cinematography, and that's it. Uh, Scorsese movie one nomination. Um, yeah, um, I have only seen the trailers, but it the movie doesn't look very good, uh, and maybe it's the trailers, <laughs> but it it just cracks me up though. The scene with um, what's his name? He was in Rome and he was in Game of Thrones. Uh, I forget his name. This this is his name. He's sitting there with his huge wig and. <laughs> It just it just looks like a comedy, <laughs> and I hate saying that. I'm sure it's a good movie, but I just feel like it's it it, it could be a bit of a. I, I feel like I'm gonna be let down when I actually get to see the movie in a, maybe a few months from now on Blu-ray. I feel like I'm gonna be let down, uh, although at this point I I'm kind of expecting that. How, but you know, a few months ago when you know uh, it was supposed to be in, uh, in for the Oscar season or whatever. But in like in late November, nothing had been released by it, and uh, or about it. Uh, not it, there was not even a poster, and not not, not a trailer, nothing. Uh, and it was like, well, come on, you gotta release something. And I was, you know, impatiently waiting because I just, I mean, it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> fuck's sake, it's a Scorsese movie, and I, um, well, I, I was expecting it to be be great and it looked like it could be really great and I had been reading about the plot uh, for you know a long time and I had been building it up in my head at least a little bit and it just looked really good then I see the trailer and I'm so underwhelmed and that's a bit sad and now only one Oscar uh, nomination I don't know um, we, we shall see <laughs> I don't know visual effects I'm gonna say maybe the Jungle Book is gonna win that Oh, here's where I have to eat my own words. Okay. <laughs> a little while ago, I made a video about, uh, I don't know, a couple things. I don't know what, I, what, what the video was, but in the video I watched the Swedish film called A Man Named Ove. And I said that I didn't like it. And I said that, <laughs> I, don't, I don't exactly know what I said, but I said that it, it wasn't good and I didn't, I didn't understand all the praise. And I, I talked about the Oscars that people have been discussing how it's, it's possible that it might be nominated. Or that at least that it was going to be Sweden's contribution. And then I might have said something like, I doubt that it's going to be nominated. But it was. Uh, it was nominated for Best Foreign Film and <laughs> Best Achievement in Makeup and Hairstyling. Really? <sighs> for... Okay, okay, I, I, that's a bit odd. Why? Why? I don't get it. Uh, maybe it's really good marketing. It doesn't make much. Why, why would a Swedish film be nominated in that category, <laughs> along with Star Trek Beyond and Suicide Squad? What? I, I, I. Anyway, and if you watch the movie, it's just it's the main actor. He's really famous in Sweden. One of the most uh, popular actors, I guess, one of the most well-known actors in Sweden for the past 20 years, maybe 25. And he looks different, but it's... it's I, okay, moving on. Uh, point is <laughs> that it's nominated for not one, but two Oscars. And it's been really well received overseas too, apparently, and I... I feel like I might have been a bit harsh, but it's... I just don't really... It's not that great. Oh well, I'm gonna have to give it, give it another watch eventually. You know, at this point I wouldn't even be surprised if it's gonna win because I've heard so much about it. How it's been praised overseas, internationally and stuff. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm still at it. Uh, it's quite a while later. This video is so fucking... Two hours long, really? 
That's officially the longest video I have up on YouTube, I think. I don't think I have a video that has passed the two hour mark before. That's ridiculous. But anyway, um, I had to mention something that I, did, that I did not think about when I talked about uh, a man named Uwe. Uh, a man called Uwe, I don't know what the English name is. Um, the, the fact that he's nominated for not just foreign film, which I've come to accept now, reluctantly. Um, I thought about makeup and hairstyling. Interestingly enough, last year, for 2016, for that for, for last year's Oscars, uh, the 100-year-old man who climbed out the window and disappeared uh, was nominated for, for that same category uh, only one year ago, a Swedish film in the company of The Revenant and Mad Max Fury Road, which is almost even more odd. Um, however, the makeup in that movie was actually really good and impressive. In this one, I don't really understand it. Okay, because look at this. Um, there's, n I, I, I can't imagine the 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 reason for the nomination being anything else than this. Um, so look at the um, look at the actor. I don't know if you know about this movie, but this is the way the actor looks in real life, and this is him in the movie. Is it really that different? What do you think? Why is a Swedish movie? No, like this nominated for an Oscar I don't I, it's it'd be sorry to me um, does it <laughs> could it have something to do with the fact that um, another Swedish movie last year was nominated for that category is there something um, in the Oscar PR stuff that goes goes on behind the scenes or whatever that I don't know about maybe Sweden has a foot in in, in that category I, I, you know what I've no I've no idea how, how that stuff works really just for the hell of it, I'll show you a comparison of the last year, uh, last year's actor and then the char character too, because that actually made kind of sense. Okay, there he is. Looking the way he looks in real life, and this is him in the movie. So at least that makes sense, you know. But this new one, I don't understand. Um, but anyway. Oh, and there's a sequel coming out to um, the 100-year-old. He's now 101. <laughs> and um, anyway, back to the video. It should be over any any minute now. And I am tired of listening to myself talking. Uh, so I am going to uh, enjoy when this is over. <laughs> so um, the other nominees for um, uh, that category is... Um, Tony Erdman, which is one that I'm waiting for a release for, uh, and Land of Mine, I think, Danish movie. Uh, Tony Erdman is uh, German. Uh, Tana, is that Australian, maybe? Uh, yeah. And then um, The Salesman. And now, because of um, uh, Trump, uh, the director, apparently, Asghar Asghar Farhadi, he made a separation and he made the pass, which I haven't seen uh, he is not gonna be allowed into the country um, because he's from Iran uh, so so yeah, fucking Trump man um, yeah, he's a bit of a cunt, for sure uh, but let's move on <laughs> best animated movie Kubo, Moana uh, Zootopia and the red turtle and my life my life as a zucchini uh, the red turtle I've heard really good things about um, and I'm looking forward to that my life has my life as a, as a zucchini I've heard nothing about but it looks pretty good actually uh, and then Kubo I unboxed pretty recently and I was a little bit disappointed I I mean it was good but I wasn't really that invested in the story and I didn't really care too much about the story it didn't make much sense to me uh, Zootopia was really good though, and um, one I haven't seen yet. Uh, so usually my two favorite categories uh, in the Oscars are documentary and foreign films, because those two are usually the ones where you find out about some new movies. You're expecting the best actors and the best actresses and the best films, usually. There might be some surprises, but generally you, you expect. I mean, there's no surprises really, uh, generally, not, not a lot. But for documentaries and foreign films, you, you, you find out about a lot of new movies. Um, but for the documentary genre this year, there's not a lot that I'm 
all that interested in. Um, I did start watching 13th on Netflix. I have to finish it. I didn't finish it, but I'm gonna finish it. Uh, Life Animated looks really good. Uh, and then OJ Made in America. I guess we're having TV shows in the Oscars now. Uh, I don't I, I, I suppose. Uh, that's gonna win, obviously. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, right? That, that that's gonna win. Um, maybe Life Animated, but... We shall see. But yeah, so not, not, not a lot of movies in those two categories this year that I hadn't really heard about or that I had heard about but that I'm excited to see. Uh, I mean a couple, but not as much as previous years. Uh, I mean I talked about Embrace of the Serpent and, and Son of Saul in the same category last year. Um, but you know, I mean I haven't seen any of them except for the fucking Uwe movie, so um, I don't know. But I mean, I, 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 for best foreign language films, I've only seen the one that is not foreign to me. Um, um, and um, the other ones, I, I don't know. I'm sure they're good. Tony Erdman and The Salesman, I'm sure they're very good. And Land of Mine sounds really good, actually. It sounds really intriguing. Uh, oh, right, and Jackie Chan. Honorary award. That's, that's cool. Um, I was surprised to find that out. I think they announced that a long time ago, uh, but I was uh, pretty happy for him to find that out. But I, I was a bit surprised, but uh, he de definitely deserves it. I think I might have mentioned that. Did I mention that in a vlog? Who knows? I don't know. So I think that's everything I wanted to comment on. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the Oscars. I mean, just a few thoughts that I need to get out. Uh, nothing major, but there you go. Um, I also want to mention <laughs> that I am currently re-watching Friends again. Um, well, <sighs> see, Friends used to be something um, that I needed in my life when I was like in my teens, in, in my teens, I don't know, for, for quite a few years actually. And I, I can't believe how many good memories I have from that show and how big a part it was of my life. I mean. I don't even want to know how <laughs> many weeks of constant time of lying in my bed watching Friends that I have spent. I mean, you know. Um, uh, but I did watch Friends with my friends too, though, so it's it's not all sad. But uh, yeah, Friends was really good company for me in my um, teens. Um, but I haven't seen it in a, in a long time. I think. I might have rewatched Friends all the way through for the first time a few years ago, but I can't remember and I can't believe how I don't remember that. I mean, I don't know, but I think, I mean, because how I was introduced to Friends, I watched a few episodes on TV, I guess I decided to get a box set and I, the one that I got first was season 6, because I didn't know which one I was, I was supposed to get first and somehow I just didn't see the numbers on the box sets, I guess, so I just grabbed one at random and it happened to be the sixth one. I, I guess I liked the cover, I don't know. My grandma bought that for me, actually. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I watched um, season six and then I watched season seven and then I think my sister had season one, two and three, so I went back and watched them and I, it was all over the place, so I never watched them in order until a few years ago when I think I watched them from the beginning to end. I'm pretty sure I did. And uh, I can't believe that I, I don't re even remember if I did, but I think I did. I mean, if, if I did, I, I probably mentioned it in a video, but who knows what video that might be. So there's there might be proof somewhere, but I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I've gone back and <laughs> started re-watching re it now again. And watching Friends now is a very odd experience because it's like, it's as if, I'm watching it on, on Netflix by the way, and it's it's as if time has stood still because whereas I, you know, understand a few things now which I didn't before, I mean a few bigger words which I, I didn't get before and I watched it usually with the Swedish subtitles before and some things might have been translated translated poorly or they might have, there might have been some puns which were untranslatable so the translator had to be um, imaginative, imaginative or had to come up with something similar in Swedish and now I'm just watching it with the English language and I'm hearing stuff which I didn't hear before and there, there are a few things like that but mainly 
I'm laughing at the same stuff that I did in the same way that I did 10 years ago. And I, yeah, so it's like time has stood still. And it's a bit bittersweet to watch it because, you know, I watch it, you know, quite often with this really good friend of mine and I'm not friends with him anymore. And I think about him sometimes and it's like, it's still almost a bit sad <laughs> that we don't talk to each other anymore. And I think about those times we had, those times we had, well, you know, uh, watching Friends and it, it was a really good time. Uh, so th these things come back to me, but also all the great memories of Friends come back. Be yeah, it's it's really weird. I mean, I've watched the show enough to <laughs> to remember um, all the different lines and this the way, not just the lines, but the exact tone of their voices. Even though I haven't heard the lines in years, it's somehow in here. Um, <laughs> I watched it a lot. I mean, for a few years I watched it almost every day, I think. For a few years. I'm not exaggerating. I, I, yeah. My mom once said, years and years ago, but still, she said, uh, yeah, well, uh, for a while all you watched was fucking Friends. All, only Friends, you know, you would only watch Friends. Uh, she might not have said fucking Friends, I don't know. But that's essentially, there was, if she didn't say fucking Friends, she, she it was in between the lines. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's it's kind of weird watching it now, but at the same time it makes sense because I know the show so well. It's in here. The, the whole world of Friends is somewhere in a little little corner of my brain, you know, kept together. In it's like uh, like I put all of that information in there, and I've locked the door. It's like airtight, and now I'm opening up again. And all these lines, everything in the show is just coming back to me, and I just rem rem remember all of it uh, mostly. And uh, it's fun to watch it again. It's a bit random to bring that up now, but I just felt like doing that. Um, I was gonna talk about some other stuff too <laughs> that I've watched on Netflix, but I, now it's a bit too long, I think. I think this is probably about an hour and a half now, and I think I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I wasn't even planning on watching Friends again. I just, I was doing something. I mean, they recently added a Friends to Netflix, and I was watching, I mean, I was do. I was gonna either do something around the apartment or I was gonna take a nap and I just wanted something on in the background so I, I checked Netflix for something and I was like, well, let, let's put on a, a Friends episode for the first time in five years, whatever. So I did and then I, I watched a few episodes at random just the way I used to do and I started with season four, five maybe or six, or I jumped in between a little bit. And then I, I was enjoying it, and I so I kept watching it, and then I was like, well, maybe I'll just go back from season one and I'll watch it all the way through again. So now I'm halfway through season one, or a little bit more than that. And I'm guessing I'm gonna end up going through the whole thing, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and we'll see what that's like. I'm gonna give you an update later on, and see um, if it's if, if it's all the way I remember it. Or uh, even, I mean, even talking about it that way, the way I remember it feels wrong because of course I remember it. I mean, like I said, it's still in here. Uh, but it has been many years since I saw it. I mean, if this was anything else, then it would have been like a distant memory. But because it's friends and because I watched it so much, it's still very uh, um, kept together in here somehow. So it's cool how the brain works that thousands of lines and details about a show that you haven't touched in years, it's still in here. Anyway, I digress. Well, I didn't, but... <laughs> okay, um... Oh, by the way, got an iPhone, an iPhone 5, but still, I needed an, a, a smartphone, so, uh, yeah, that's my... <laughs> that's my first smartphone. Yeah. Uh, I was, um, a bit stubborn uh, about not getting one, but now I finally caved. So, um that um, will come in handy. I mean, that's, yeah, I'm, I'm already, um, um, yeah, 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 I think I could go back to, to my last one, but I would not like it, so uh, I knew when I was gonna get an iPhone that I would be uh, not hooked, but uh, that I would be happy to have it, but I was like, well, I don't know what I'm missing out on, so why do I need it? I mean, I'm fine with an um, old phone. 
I don't I don't really know what I'm missing out on so how can I miss something that I don't know anyway that's that was my thinking and that's that's what I was saying for years but finally I got an iPhone so maybe I can film some videos um, out in public more inconspicuously now because I complained about that in the past having to bring the bring this camera uh, you know I don't know if you can see it's a pretty eh, you can't really see I don't know it's it's a bigger well, it's a small camera but it's a very obvious camera and uh, out in public and hunting for movies and stuff uh, this is pretty awkward to bring out and film with but a phone might be uh, more convenient so maybe I can do that a bit more um, but I don't know if I will but I, I, I could it's an option I have now so uh, anyway um, now the stuff that I did not talk about uh, well it's not a whole lot it's uh, that stuff on the floor those piles <laughs> And then um, a bunch of stuff on the way. So actually uh, I got through quite a lot. There's the stuff down there, not this one. And um, well, the, okay, no, there's more stuff here. There's a few titles here too. <sighs> okay, not all of that, but some of that, most of that. But I shall get back. I shall make another video eventually. <laughs> and talk about the rest of the stuff and oh then I have all the other stuff that I you know from that previous video of mine that I decided not to upload so I have to show you that too and then I have some figures that I've <sighs> collected for the past months that I haven't shown you yet I, I will do this it's, it's it just just you know in, in due time <laughs> uh, for now this was one of my longest videos for sure. Um, I guess I wanted to make it up because uh, I don't really make uh, videos on a regular basis anymore. It might be a while until the next one. So um, just I just wanted to spoil you with content or maybe torture you with content at this point. I don't know. But I wanted to make a long video because um, just because of the fact that it's been a while and and because it might be a while and because I had too much stuff and and I'm gonna stop talking and I will talk to you later bye bye <laughs>